So as a developer, I just want to code. I don't want to waste time setting up the bits of infrastructure, for example, a database that I need to support my application. I just want it there. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Docker to very quickly and easily spin up an instance of SQL Server and connect to it and use it from your application. Well, hello, wherever you are, whenever you are, where am I? Melbourne, Australia, as usual, and when is it? It's September 2019. Well, it's great to be back here on YouTube with you, and it's great to have you here with me, so thank you. Um, so as I said in today's introduction, today we're going to be spinning up an instance of SQL Server and Docker for use in your applications. Um, so a quick video, no coding, but um, one that I hope you will find useful as part of your development workflow. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get on with it. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go through the ingredients that you're going to need for this video. You're not going to need much, actually. All you really need is Docker running on your desktop. So if you're running Windows or Mac, you'll be using Docker Desktop. If you're using Linux, you'll be more than likely using Docker Community Edition, and they're all free. Now, optionally, um, I'm going to be using VS Code. We're not doing any coding in this video, just command line stuff, but VS Code has got a brilliant Docker plugin that just allows you to see the containers you have and the images you have and all that kind of stuff and whether they're running and all that kind of thing. So it's really useful for me doing a video on it. You don't really need it. Um, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, optional as well, I'm calling it SQL Server Tools. Um, I use SQL Server so I have the Management Studio installed and the command line tools installed. For this video you don't actually need it because I'm going to show you how you can uh, use the SQL command line natively inside the container without needing any tools, But that so they are optional. Um, but I'm going to show you that anyway. And then a bit of a prerequisite, I'm not going to go too much into the detailed theory of what Docker is and how it works and all that kind of stuff. If you're interested in that, then watch my previous video, which is deploy a .NET Core API with Docker, and I cover all that stuff there. Other than that, I think we're uh, ready to move on. Okay, so I'm just going to fire up a version of, a version, a instance of Visual Studio Code. I'm really just going to be working within the terminal here, or the command line, so you don't have to use Visual Studio Code, you can use your PowerShell or your Command Prompt or whatever the equivalent is on Linux and Mac, Bash, Shell or whatever. The main reason I'm using Visual Studio Code is because it has this excellent little plugin that you have to install uh, called Docker. It just gives you a great visual representation of what's happening within your system. That's about it, so that's why I like to use it. So, to get started, all we're really going to do is issue a Docker run command and pull down an image from the Docker Hub of SQL Server and, and run it and connect into it. The diff it's not, not really a difference. The, in order to get an instance of SQL Server up and running, you need to pass in quite a few different flags to get it running. And I'm just going to go through and explain what those are, and then we're going to connect in. So no surprises, we type docker run. And the first thing we want to pass in is actually something called an environment flag or an environment switch. And you need, uh, we're going to pass in three, but we need two in order to get the instance up and running. The first one that we need to pass in is basically just accepting the Microsoft Universal Licensing Agreement, EULA, and just set that to yes. We then pass in um, our SA password, not SQ, SA password. Now, SA is a system administrator account on SQL Server. It's the God account. Um, so be very careful who you give that password out to and you know in this instance we're actually passing stuff in in plain text so uh, you probably wouldn't want to be uh, doing this kind of thing in a production type scenario but for development purposes it's fine um, but yeah just be aware that the SA uh, account is um, yeah all powerful so you generally have to pass in something relatively complex so let's say PA dollar sign dollar sign W0RD 
2019 as the password. And then we have one final environment flag to pass in. This one, I believe, is optional. Um, and this is really just telling the uh, telling the container when it starts up what flavor of SQL Server you want. So by that, I mean things like, is it the express version, the developer version, the full version? If you don't provide this flag, I think it's, it defaults to the developer version, which we don't want. We want the express version. So MS SQL uh, PID equals express. And express is the effectively the free edition. We're then gonna pass in our port binding Again, refer to my last video if you don't know what that means. Basically, it's just saying uh, we've got an internal port inside our container. What do we want to map externally for things to connect in? So I'm the internal port's 1433. I'm just going to map it externally to the same port. That's all that is. And then finally, we're going to just specify the image that we want to pull down. We're going to use the D flag, which means run it detached. So all that means is when we actually do run the container, uh, instead of hogging the command prompt that we type it in, it will just kind of run in the background. So make sure I get the image name right. So it's MCR Microsoft. If I can spell it uh, Microsoft.com, not VOM, MSSQL server. And then the version we want is everything after the colon. So in this instance, it's 2017 latest. And then we're gonna pull down the Ubuntu Linux version. So you can obviously get Windows versions. We're gonna use the Linux version here. Now, just giving a quick scan over that, that all looks, um, it looks pretty much correct. So hitting enter, you can see that I don't have a local copy of the SQL Server image. I did have, I, delib I deliberately deleted it for this video to let you see what happens. And basically because I don't have a local copy of the image, it will go off to Docker Hub and pull down the Ubuntu Linux version of SQL Server, as you can see now. Now, again, on subsequent runs, it will check to see if we have a, a, a recent version of the image, and we will do if we run, ran this the next time. So it will just use that. Uh, lo local version, so it'll be much, much quicker. So we'll just let that finish and then it should spin up and then we're gonna connect into our SQL Server and have a bit of a look around um, at one specific thing in particular. Okay, so we can see that the image has been finally downloaded. We get this, uh, looks like a GUID returned, which is kind of identifying the instance that's that's running. You can see here that we've uh, got our command prompt returned, so we can type in stuff. That was the detached flag. And you can see up here in the Docker plugin that we have, well, first of all, we have an image now in our kind of image repository, the one that we pulled down, it's now there. And we can also see that we have a running container and that's denoted by this little green triangle. You can see that this uh, SQL Server instance is running. So what we can do now, um, I've got Microsoft Management Studio installed, which is the tool that you use to administer SQL servers. Um, I'm just gonna connect into my local instance. So I have um, SQL Server Express running on, on natively on my desktop, so that's all cool. Um, but I'm now going to additionally connect into our local Docker instance. So having done this before, um, it was available in my dropdown, but if you're doing this for the first time, you'll want to specify local host, followed by a comma, and then the port number. So you can remember I specified that port mapping. You need to specify the port mapping here, 1433. It may, because 1433 is the default one, it might, you may not need to put that in if, if um, Actually, let's try it. I won't put that in. Let's see how we go. And we're going to use SQL Server Authentication. We're going to use the SA account, and then we're going to type in the password. Hopefully I can uh, remember it. And let's see if that works without the port allocation. It does. There you go. I believe, um, let's just disconnect from that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll disconnect from that. I'll reconnect. Um, I believe if you specify a port other than 1433, say you specified port 5000, I think you would probably have to supply that in this way. So comma, port number. 
So I'm just going to put it in just for completeness, but it looks like you don't have to do that if you're using 1433. And you'll also notice, although I don't think I ticked this, um, it doesn't remember the SA password anyway. Let me click remember password and connect in. Yep, that worked. I'm just, uh, I'm learning as well, I'm learning myself here. So let's uh, let's disconnect and we'll reconnect in. Well, I'm going to disconnect from everything. That's okay. Yes, it didn't actually remember the SA password. So that's obviously a security feature. So we'll have to type that in again and type in password. No point in clicking remember because it's not going to remember it. Now, here we go, we've connected. Now, if we expand databases, you'll see that all we'll have is uh, system databases, which are the databases that um, SQL Server uses internally for itself. There are no user databases. Now we can, of course, create one if we want. And we'll call it test and click OK. And you will see that we have test database running in our Docker container, which is all fantastic. Now, what about if you don't have or don't want to install something like Microsoft Management Studio? And in fact, if you're using Linux or Mac, you, don't, you can't install it. You have to resort to the SQL command tools. So yeah, the SQL Server, uh, just to be clear, the SQL Server command line tools are generally installed when you install SQL Server. So if you have SQL Server installed, you'll generally have access to them. If you don't, then you would need to install them separately on your local machine. Now you may not want to do that for various reasons. So again, what I'm going to show you here is how you can actually attach in to a running container and basically use the command line tools within, within the container. So let's just minimize Management Studio. Let's bring back up our instance of Visual Studio. Go back over to the uh, Docker container. You can see our SQL Server is still running. And we can actually type uh, docker ps to get a list of all running containers. So actually just mirror what we're seeing up here in our little tool. And we actually need to do that anyway because we want to get this container ID in order to connect in. So just before I move on to showing you how you can do that, you can actually in, uh, in this plugin just do attach shell and it will do exactly this, well, pretty much exactly the same thing I'm just going to show you. So it saves you a bit of time, but I will still show you how to do it at the command prompt as well. So we're going to type docker exec, use the IT flag. Now the IT flag just means uh, we're going to have an interactive type session. So we're going to be potentially issuing SQL command commands at this prompt and the IT flag just allows that interaction to occur. We then want to type in the container ID and we'll just copy that, paste that in. And then we need to then provide a path to, well, we don't actually have to do this, but I'm going to do this, provide a path to the tool set that we want to use. So if you don't provide this, you just get a vanilla command prompt, which is cool and you may want that. In this instance, I'm actually going to specify that we want to start the shell with these command tools already running. So in order to do that, we specify the path to where they exist. OPT, MSSQL, tools, bin, SQL, CMD. And then we just pass in the server uh, that we want to attach to. In this case, it's localhost. The user ID is SA. And the password is PASSWZORD2019. And I believe actually, because we're using these um, dollar signs that we need to encase those in um, single quotes. So let's see if that works. It does. So what you actually get, um, although it's not very uh, obvious, is this little one uh, with a, I don't know what that's called, an inflection. It's not an inflection. I don't know. Tell me below what that, that's called. I think I remember, but I can't recall. Um, and we can now just issue SQL commands at this command prompt inside our SQL Server. So imagine that we don't have any other SQL Server tools locally installed. We have now just connected in and we're using the tool set from within the container. So just, just to show you it working, um, I did previously show you this list of system databases in Management Studio, so master, model, MSDB, and tempdb. You can actually issue a SQL command here that will list those databases. So let's just do that now. So it's just select name, 
from SYS sys data bases and we'll end it with a semicolon. When you hit enter, it doesn't do anything. You've then got to type go and it will then execute the SQL statements that you've put in. And you can see here it lists out the databases that we've got. And in fact, it's actually put in test as well. So it's not just the system databases, it's the system databases plus our test user database. So that's about it. So all I wanted to cover today was spinning up an instance of SQL Server in a Docker container and connecting into it and, and using it. Now, we, we didn't use it in any particularly <coughs> involved way, but we did attach in using SQL Server Management Studio and we created a database and we also connected in to the container itself and ran a SQL command at the command prompt. Now, there's nothing to stop you using that container with your applications now, and you would connect into it using a connection string or whatever in exactly the same way as you would do with a local instance of SQL Server in this particular setup. Um, if you're going to run your SQL Server instance in a container and you're gonna run your Docker API, as an example, in a container, then we do need to do a bit more work. But if you're just running the container as we are here, in a well, running as a container and you're connecting in externally running a, a bit of code running locally on your machine you can connect in as we have done here using microsoft um, management studio so that's about it the next video i want to do is actually using something called docker compose and that is going to cover the use case where we have everything running as containers there's a bit more work involved there and they won't actually connect to each other by default we have to do a bit more wiring up so that's a video for next time anyway if you found the video useful or you just enjoyed it then give it a like if you haven't subscribed please do so it's always great to have more people subscribing other than that thank you very much for joining me and i'll see you all next time